I'm Louie, and as always, I'm joined by my bud Dave. Yo, I got my laptop back. We're in business. <laughs> you were out of commission there for, uh, for yep. a little bit there. You were, uh, for a you week. Were, uh, fucking Apple shut you down. Boom. They were like, nah, negative. <laughs> you know what the weird thing is? So I've never experienced this because I've had Apple laptops for a long time. Yeah. And apparently it's a thing. I just never got to experience it, but I had a swelled battery. And the yeah. thing is, it happened over time, so I didn't really notice it. And then, like, obviously, like, I saw, like, the bottom of the laptop started to bulge a little bit. And, like, the, cr- the sides would crack open, but I could easily just, fl- you know, just snap back in. But then it came to the point where it wouldn't even snap back in. So yeah. I was like, okay, this needs to be, f- this is not good. So it's, it's a huge looking. difference. It's yeah, insane. It's the difference yeah. is insane. But like when you see the battery, and I'm sure you didn't get to see it because it's an Apple I didn't product. Get to see it. I've seen them on PCs, and, it and it's crazy. They're like big and fat. So it's it's, it's, it's a it wild up. thing to see. It almost looks like it's gonna explode. But yeah, it's still good that you got it fixed and you're back. You've returned in this episode. Even though Chris Chris held it down, Chris is. Chris is a part of the squad at this point. He's he's been on so much, so you know he he was definitely a uh, a good person to have 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 host the show That's with right, me baby. for a week. So you you know you already know how Chris uh, Chris does, but we can finally talk about uh, doing this little show for two years now, which is fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. Isn't that wild, dude? Yeah. It doesn't feel like two years. I still feel like it we're figuring feel, this shit it, out. <laughs> it doesn't feel like two years. No, I agree. I was thinking about but it. I, I was like, damn. Yeah. I was like, I was like, you know, it's it's kind of crazy just because time flies by so quick it, and in a blink of an eye, you know, we're like doing this for two years. And I, I look back at it and I'm like, wow, we've done a lot of fucking episodes at this point. And and yeah. the last six months or so seven months haunted hangover as a brand has expanded with patreon us doing a monthly show i think we've been doing patreon now for eight months if if i, I remember correctly uh, yeah because we did let's see yeah well we're, if we're if we're is it eight or nine months because we did eight halloween. or nine months yeah yeah, yeah. just Cause, going cause by the halloween around. movies Right. Yeah, we've been going by the Halloween movies, but we've skipped a few months to kind of give ourselves a mental break from fucking Michael Myers. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it's been kind of, you know, touch and go with that. And we're nearing the last few films in that franchise. Um, but we've been doing that, you know, uh, we, I brought, brought back Anthology Obscura as kind of a haunted hangover spinoff in a way. You know, we've been doing Edition. that once a month as well on top of the normal show that we do bi-weekly mm-hmm. and, and in the future the plan the plans to just keep on expanding and do more and 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 just do new things and kind of ex- expand haunted hangover in a way where you know it's all about halloween and obviously horror kind of fits in that in that world and we do tend to talk about horror a lot but also maybe do some more laid back stuff where we talk about you know other bullshit music that has nothing to do with Halloween and things like that. Or, I, or another, a movie. I love this idea. And you know, and that's kind of the plan and that's kind of what Patreon is in a way. That's what it's going to become over time. I think, you know, from month to month, if we don't want to cover a Halloween topic or something, we could just kind of talk about general shit. The other thing we've been doing is incorporating a video element of the show, which has been fun for YouTube I'm trying to expand that whole thing and and kind of get people to the youtube channel and i've been having a good time kind of editing our show together it's been a it's been very experimental in a way kind of figuring out a way to make an audio only show originally also have a video component how have you been feeling just about our our progress as Uh, a podcast the past two years in general as a whole i I think i i think it's fun to do and i i like the you know i like the crowd that listens to us and you know, it's something I, I enjoy talking about bi-weekly. Is that that's the right term, right? It's bi-weekly? Yes. <laughs> yeah. You know? Um, yeah. It's just a fun thing to do. And, you know, as someone that likes Halloween, I don't live in Halloween 24-7. So it is nice, though, to chat about it, you know, here and there. 
So yeah. I've I've enjoyed you know I've enjoyed doing the show and I I think one of the one of the things that you brought up just just before was that I would like to kind of talk about things that are maybe not exactly Halloween related and just kind of pop culture related and I like that you brought that up that you want to start doing that more because for me I would love to do that more and I like that we're branching out into that so. Yeah, it's it's kind of just expanding the brand, like haunted Ho- haunted hangover as an umbrella brand, and, and and kind of doing stuff. Even if it's like we do a thirty minute show once a year, or once a year, once a month, I mean, where we kind of talk about a comic book that you read or I read or our favorite comic I books. Would, I or, love that. Our favorite non Halloween or, or you know or horror films or, or things of that nature. Just rambling, talking shit. You know, that's kind of what we want to do. And that's kind of the plan for Patreon in a way where if you like, you know, hearing us talk about Halloween and horror and spooky, like nostalgia and shit like that, you know, maybe from time to time we can, you can, you know, over on Patreon, you can listen to us and we can talk about something else, you know. So that's kind of what the third year of Haunted Hangover, us kind of growing as a brand, as a show, obviously, again, Anthology Obscura. Um, I've got some ideas uh, of doing, you know, in the realm of Halloween, some one man shows that'll be a little shorter, um, more haunted house reviews because I love doing those. And usually it's just me doing those and just evolving, you know, because c- I love Halloween. You love Halloween. And we're always going to focus on Halloween. That's kind of the whole point it's of this. It's going to be know, Halloween adjacent. <laughs> Whatever it is, yeah. it's going to be Halloween or Halloween adjacent. But it is and fun just, to sneak yeah. in some things that are not exactly Halloween. And, and I think, yeah, and I definitely think that we're at the point now where we've been doing this for two years. You know, it's me, you, Chris, Sammy, and Tommy Valley yep. from time to time. Kind of, you know, Too as the visible. crew that do that do all this. And it would be good to kind of just, you know, veer off, go, go to the, take the sec, the other path, the other direction and kind of do some yeah, other absolutely. stuff. And I, and I don't know if people will like that, that listen to our show, but I think I if think you listen, okay yeah, I, I, I agree. I think so too, but I think it would be fun to, to do that. And again, if you haven't subscribed to our Patreon page and you, and we never do this at the top of the show, we never push anything never. at the top of the show. Um, I definitely recommend going over there. And, you know, support. And it's basically the way you can support us currently the most. That's what I always tell people. Just go over to Patreon. Because the past few months, I, I've, you know, gotten comments on YouTube where people have been like, hey, I would love to support your show, you know, any way I can. That's the that's the the top way to support us currently. And and we do we do plan on having some some tiers that maybe might be a dollar or two more that you'll get you'll have access to more content and merch that's we're Yo. very much in the early stages of merch we need to make that we need to make haunted hangover dad hats I, i'm i i do want to i do want to do that um you know we're starting small recently i put up some stickers like a vinyl sticker set really inexpensive they they came out really good um, you know, they a couple did. people have, have a couple people have already picked up. We have a very limited quantity of those. So if you want to support us that way, you know, just go on our website, hauntedangover.com, and you'll have a link to our store. We have even got donation links. If you just want to donate to us in any way, you can do that there in our, you know, our website, hauntedhangover.com. And but, also, just j- just yes. so we, j- wait, just so we don't leave anybody out. Shout outs to Grimy, Optimus Grime. From the Leftover Pizza Podcast for one of the designs on the stickers. And shout out to Elijah from Magnetic Magic Rentals for the other, which is, I would say, yes. I guess, the flagship design of yes, the show. the main the design. <laughs> right. Our, so main, shout out our, our main logo. Yeah, shout out to those dudes. Grimy is going to get a shout out in a few here anyway because he uh, left yes. us a question. But yeah, shout out to those two dudes. They've been... They've been with us kind of in a way helping us out yep. since the beginning. Absolutely. Since... since we started this whole fucking circus <laughs> figuring shit Absolutely. out. Absolutely. And you know, it's funny, dude. I sometimes think about it and, and I haven't gone back and listened to our like first few episodes. I but either. I'm sure I'm sure, you know, we've gotten, I'm guessing, better as as host and and I think have so. grown in doing this. And I just wanna I, honestly, dude, I just wanna I just want it to keep fucking growing. You know, in, in a way where we're just constantly 
having Constant a great evolution. time doing this. Yeah. yeah, evolving, you know, and it's, it's yeah. again, it's wild to think how, you know, I was just like, hey, you want to do this podcast with me? And you were like, yeah, whatever, man. <laughs> and you, and we did it. And, you know, I think we touched on it last year with our one year anniversary. It's just kind of crazy how you always hear these horror stories where people are like, oh, if your show doesn't last, you know, six episodes, you're not going to fucking make it. And I'll be honest, that shit's true. I think I've said it before. There's so many you podcasts have. I see where they'll start, they'll release an episode once every six months or some shit. We have friends <laughs> that, that have shows like that. And no, not to, we're not. I'm not ragging on them, shitting on them. I'm not doing anything like that. But I will say this is a lot of work, scheduling, and you've got to have a passion to want to like, you know, and I'm lucky, you know, and this kind of plays into a question later and, and I don't want to get into it too much because it's a question that one of our own friends sent to us, funny enough, that's a part of the Haunted Hangover crew, but just enjoying doing this and and I still love it, editing the show. It might drive me fucking crazy because it's a lot of fucking work, but, you know, and scheduling with everybody and doing all that, but just producing the show for me, I love it. It's work, but I fucking love it. And it's, it's like everything work else. you like to do. Yeah, even with filmmaking and, and things like that, when it comes to editing, because I edit the shit out of this show, as as, yeah. as funny as that sounds, but like just kind of kind we're trying of to put something good together. out there. That's why yeah. I want it to sound profesh. And that's the other thing I want us to also, you know, on that, you know, on that level, sound more professional, and, and maybe even in the future. And this is something I want to do. Maybe do some live shows, like in this style. Maybe do some in person, and maybe do some live like this, where people can, you know join us you know i know youtube is big for that so my plans to yeah. eventually for us to do those maybe monthly or something like that someone some member of the haunted hangover squad you know joining me or all of us that'd be awesome and just kind of shooting the shit doing talking about something taking questions having a good time and all that jazz absolutely so so, so with that out of the way the 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 two-year celebratory intro there <laughs> We have some questions here that we've done this, I think, twice before. It's only two times we've done this. Yeah. Two shows in two years, which I thought we've done this more, but I realized I was like, shit, we've only done this two times. And we usually, you know, we use social media, Instagram, Twitter. We ask, you know, friends and listeners of the show to submit questions because, you know, a lot of the times it, it takes us in different category. It takes us in different places, I, sh- I should say. And what we're going to talk about and, and new topics and new things. And we end up always fucking taking a left turn and start talking about other shit while of these course. questions, you know, because these questions take us to those places. And, uh, you know, a lot of these obviously pertain to Halloween, but there's a couple that don't. And, and I dig that. And that's, and you know, some are obviously horror related to, um, but there's a couple here, you know, that the, my favorite type of questions are the ones that pertain to the show itself like as a show you know and we'll, yeah. we'll get to those in a few seconds but let's let's start with with instagram i said get lost now take your big stick and your boyfriend and find the bus to catch uh the first person that submitted questions. He submitted three questions to us. He went fucking, he went all out in submitting questions to us. Um, this is from Dr. Underscore Feeney's Underscore House Underscore Of Underscore Terra. This is actually a friend of mine. I've known him for years. We've never met in person. We've been friends through social media for like 10 years, I think. Fucking Facebook Instagram, okay. MySpace, probably. Who the fuck knows? It's probably goes. Okay. I think he goes. He goes way back, and him and I have always kind of caught up from time to time. Uh, it's my buddy Jeremy again, Doctor Feeney's House of Terror. That's a pretty cool name. I'm assuming that's a playoff of uh, Mister Feeney from Boy Meets World, but I might oh, be that's, wrong. That's what I thought it was. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I thought too. But I do like the uh, the name there, the Instagram handle. But uh, his first question is Halloween costume you have always wanted to do but haven't. It's a good one. Dave, I'll let you take us away. I what's, knew what's right first, off the uh, bat when I read this. What's a, what's a costume you never wanted? Uh, you wanted to dress up but didn't. Uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme from Hard Target. I wanted to do the <laughs> mullet and the duster and the duster or the uh, Canadian tuxedo, whichever one. Yeah. 
Um, I'll do it one day. That's always been a bucket list Halloween costume I've wanted oh, to do. Man. Is he wearing yep. like a tank top underneath the? Uh, no, I mean, he's just got like he's got like really? he's got like he's got a duster. I think it's a black duster, and he's got like khakis on and like a shirt tucked in, and he's got like fucking like nice shoes on <laughs> or like boots. <laughs> And that's it. And then the other one, he's the other, like, the other main outfit he's in, he's wearing a fucking, he's all wearing all denim. So it's, you <laughs> <Yeah>. know, it's. <laughs> the mullet, though. The mullet's what really makes that costume, 100%. That's what really fucking yeah. does so it. So that's. You gotta have that. That is always that sick been mullet. a costume I've always wanted to do. So that's, that's my, uh, that's my Halloween costume. What about you? Well, before, before I get into my pick, that's a good fucking movie, number one. And number two. I love that movie. Was that actually his hair? He really grew out a mullet, right? I, I have a feeling it is. Rob Schneider's in that movie too, right? <laughs> no, remember, is I don't think so. Oh, I'm thinking no. of a different job. You know who's in of, it? Of the, Lance Henriksen's in it, Lance and Henriksen, fucking yes. Wilford Wilford Brimley's in it. He's Wilford like a fucking Brimley. Cajun hunter. I think I'm thinking of Sudden Impact or something. I think I'm thinking of a different uh, Jean Claude Van Damme movie. That's why I got, I know all the fucking movies, but I think that's where I think the Rob Schneider, Rod Schneider, whatever the fuck his name is, um, came from. Um, my costume is a, is a fucking random one. It's a little weird, but I remember when the movie came out in the late '90s. I wanted to dress up as the fucking fisherman from uh, I Know What You Did Last Summer. I don't know why. I don't think I've ever seen that. And that's such a yeah. simple one to do. I've never seen anyone do that. It's just like a slicker, like a dark green. And, and, and a black. hook, right? Yeah, and a hook. That's basically, but like the mat, like the, not, it's not even a mask, but the hat kind of covers his face and then the collar like shrouds how it shrouds the face it, yeah you yeah, can't, you see can't really see what he looks like um but i always thought that was a uh a pretty cool looking yeah that's a cool one killer i've always liked that movie i know people kind of you know talk shit about the late 90s yeah, uh, horror right. films that are around our age but i've always yeah. I, I thought it was a good slasher film like i've always been a fan of i know what you did last summer and i always thought in the in the first movie that that was a pretty unique costume for a slasher killer to wear so i just remember even as a kid being like i want a fucking fisherman costume just so i could be the fisherman i think his name was like uh ben willis i think is his name um, i don't know but i haven't seen that movie since it came out <laughs> yeah you should revisit it it's actually a fun I little should. slasher movie from the I would, 90s. i'd rewatch that yeah but uh yeah that that's mine the fisherman from uh I like I know that. we did last summer that that's one maybe I'll do it I'm surprised I don't see people dress up as him so I'm saying I've never seen anyone do it Yeah and it's a pretty popular film amongst yeah, our fans You would know what it was so. from Yeah interesting interesting that no one dresses up as that maybe now I'm planting the seed I'll go to Monster Mania or some shit and like everybody and their mother will be dressed up as the fucking fisherman next I time. Would, I would really <laughs> I would enjoy that <laughs> That'd be hilarious. <laughs> Take a picture with like five fucking fishermen behind you. That'd be Louis fucking amazing. Louis just like, damn, damn, son, this was my idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next question, uh, Doctor Feeney's House of Terra, aka Jeremy, submitted was favorite horror movie or horror movies, I should say, of the last five years. Um, I'll take this one first, really quick. Uh, I, I thought about this and I, cause I didn't really go back looking at dates. This was, was tough like, oh. for me. I just, off the top of my head, I thought of one was more recent. Um, but, uh, I picked four movies in the last five years. I really enjoyed a uh, doctor sleep. Probably number one. I really enjoyed okay. doctor sleep. I dug Heard that a things. lot. Um, Midsummer, Somer. I, I enjoyed that one. I actually Hated enjoyed that it. more than, I know you didn't like it. Um, Hated I enjoyed it. it more than Her- <laughs> Hate, hated it. Um, I enjoyed it more than Hereditary. So if, if that tells you anything, um, the next one is the night house, which I actually recently saw. Um, on HBO because I didn't I, I, I when it had come out when the night the night house had come out I think it was like during the pandemic like early into the pandemic so I don't think many people went to go to the you know went to go see it in the theaters have you heard of that movie the night house I've heard of it and I was interested in seeing it but I haven't seen it yet yeah it stars Rebecca I'm Hall can't, yeah I can't say I'm in a rush to see it either but that's just I me. can tell you right now it was it was it was a, a a unique kind of original okay. take on like a ghost 
story, I guess you could say, and about like the afterlife and stuff. I, I really dug the night house. I, I don't want to talk too much okay. about it because you haven't seen it, but it's on HBO right now at the time of this recording. I, I'd recommend checking it out. And sure. the last one, I know you didn't like either, uh, X. I thought X was pretty good. So I didn't dislike X. I didn't dislike it. It's a well-made movie. Yeah. I just thought the premise the premise had promise, but then like the actual I don't want to ruin it for anybody that hasn't seen yeah, it. It yeah. just wasn't it's new film, I just was so. not I didn't yeah. I didn't care for it. But uh, I, I'd it's assume not a bad you'd rank movie. it I'd assume you'd rank it low on the like Ty West uh filmography. Uh, yeah, I, I mean on Letterboxd I gave it a three and usually if I give anything a three, to me it's okay. You know what I mean? It was all right. So Yeah. So yeah. Okay. So okay. That's cool. That's not bad. So yeah. So yeah. Doctor Sleep, Midsummer, The Night House, and X. What are uh, some of your favorite so, horror films to come out in the last five I had, years? I had to think about this because, uh, admittedly, I don't watch these newer horror films. I don't. I don't seek yeah. them out. I, I don't care for them. Uh, if I watch horror movies, it's usually older ones. And you know, since you know, I, I'm into collecting VHS, I watch a lot of the tapes that I buy. So a lot of things I watch. If it's not like an old tape, it's usually like indie shit, like an indie drama or something. That's what I'm into. That's what I that's what I like to watch now. But again, this like so I would say most of the movies fit within the last five years. But there is one. And I was like, this is definitely not from five years ago. But the first <laughs> one that came to mind was It Follows. Absolutely love yeah. It Follows. I know it's not from five years ago. It's like eight years ago. But yeah, It Follows. I thought the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre was a lot of fun to watch. I put that I on the too. list. I uh, it. Psycho, yeah, Psycho Gorman. I, I, that was a lot of fucking fun to watch. <laughs> I did not like. I did not like See? that movie. There you I go. Thought it was so, I thought it was so absurd. I loved it. It was fucking. I, 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 honestly, dude, it was one of those movies where I was waiting for it to fucking end. I don't know why. I, I couldn't. I'm surprised. It's liked, so silly. And I like shit like Hobo with a Shotgun. And stuff like that, like those kind of like grind, like throwback grindhouse ridiculous. And I've said it on the floor, I'm not a trauma fan. That definitely reminded me more of a trauma film. So maybe that's why. It was too ridiculous, okay. maybe for me. I like if, if I'm going to watch a ridiculous movie like that, I'd rather it be from the fucking 80s. Like an authentic movie that was released in the 80s, that's ridiculous. And Some of these like being ridiculous on purpose, capturing that 80s aesthetic is just not my thing. I think that's what it is. Some of them, not all of them. Okay, it's fair. I respect. I'm not gonna yuck someone's yum, as uh, my girlfriend Sheila says, which I like saying a lot. Uh, no, so yeah. Psycho Gorman, uh, Ma, which is a movie I would never have watched, but I watched it with a uh, group like watch Ma. with Sheila, yeah. Claude, uh, Tom, and I. I think I might be leaving someone else out, but uh, I liked Ma a lot. Ma was good. And Candyman, the Candyman reboot or whatever you want to call it. That was that awesome. Was I really one. enjoyed that one. And last, well, I, I should say this actually is the last one on the list, but <laughs> and it's I don't even know if it's a horror movie per se, but The Vast of Night, that was a really good one yeah. too. You could lump you could lump that into uh horror, I'd say. Sci- yeah, science fiction, sure. horror. Yeah. It had some dreary, spooky shit going on in it. That's a good pick, because I remember when that came out. You were really, you were all about that movie. That was so, fucking awesome. I think yeah, that, it, it's the a whole, good movie. Is it the movie all, or no, I, I would say a good chunk of the movie is all one take, right? There was a, I know yeah. the very beginning shot, like the first half hour is like a one shot. Yeah. It's fucking awesome. Very, very Twilight Zone-esque yeah. in a way. Um, it took me one or two sittings to get through it just because I, it was. it's not a movie you want to watch at like one in the morning, two in the morning when you're like half asleep. So, um, yeah. But I, when I did finish it, I was like, yeah, this is this is a very well-made film. Um, but yeah, those are all great picks. Minus Psycho Gorman. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> just my there opinion. Uh, uh. <laughs> um, and uh, the last question from the bunch from uh, Dr. Feeney's House of, uh, House of Terror, I should say, um, is... If you could bring back anything from a previous Halloween, what would it be? You go first, Dave. So, so there was two things that I put down for this, and uh, I like this question. And it's the mischief. I, I want the mischief back yeah. in Halloween. I want to see kids throwing eggs. I want to see kids throwing toilet paper. I want to see kids walking around with fucking egg splattered on their hoodies and shaving cream in their in their hoods and just <laughs> being all around fuckery on Halloween night. I miss that. I would love to see that back. Um, probably not 
<laughs> probably not. It's probably something parents don't want to hear. But uh, hey, uh, and also the other. This is just kind of a bonus one. Is the uh, gymnasium Halloween party experience I got to yeah. have in the elementary school. I I wonder if schools still do that kind of thing. But I, that's a really cool thing to do if they're still doing it. That's those are my yes. Yeah. We, we've talked about that memory and then my parade memory. So yeah. I, I could segue off of that pick and there you go. off Tell of your, your, your last pick there. I have, I have three little things really quick. Okay. Uh, Halloween parades. I, I, you know, I've talked about it. I'm sure I've mentioned it several times in the last two years on the show. Um, Bring them just back. Kind of that, just kind of that feeling of getting up early on Halloween as a kid, putting on your costume, thinking you look fucking fly in your costume and you're going to go to school and then just fucking strut your shit in the fucking Halloween parade mm-hmm. and like all the parents taking pictures with the fucking disposable and the Polaroids. Like, that was such a great feeling as a kid. And, and that's Absolutely. just... That's something I would love to, you know... I wish I could bring that back. That's more of like a make-believe kind of imagination deal. Uh, but two things that can be brought back, and, and I don't think kids even really do this much, or, you know, we don't have kids, so maybe we just don't see it. Um... Bobbing for apples. I only say okay. that because I only did that once. I've only done it my, once too. My entire life. And obviously with the pandemic, that is something. And just kind of, you know, people with germs and stuff. I'm, I'm sure people don't want to do shit like that now in 2022. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because of yeah. just everything that's going on. But bobbing for apples. I feel like you don't see it that often. You don't really hear about it unless it's in something old. You know, well, we listen. Covered- Let's yeah. be real here. You know, I think that's not coming back anytime <laughs> soon. Probably not. I don't think. I think that shit's dead in the water. <laughs> as, as funny as that sounds. No um, pun intended. Funny enough. Yeah, no pun intended. Um, it's funny because we had recently covered the Happy Days Halloween episode Haunted and they're bobbing for apples in that. Yep. So that came to mind that like that was a thing and you don't really see it anymore. And then the the last thing, the last small thing is the like fake out mystery boxes where, you know, someone will stick their hand in it, touch uh, peeled grapes, spaghetti, yes. and it's hair, it's eyeballs, it's cockroaches, shit like that. That was always fun. I've only ever done that once as well. And it was at the Botanical Gardens in the late 90s. I vividly remember that. It was at the Queen's Botanical Gardens, I should say. I yep. should say. And it was fucking amazing. <laughs> Shout out to Botanical Gardens having spooky walkthroughs and haunted houses. Yeah. I feel like they don't do that shit anymore. As far as I know. I, I know one place here in Queens, uh, the Queens Farm has a on Halloween weekend, usually the weekend before or on Halloween, depending on when Halloween falls. Right. They have a little haunted house for like five bucks that like a bunch of kids yeah, the, are in it. The one by me still up. does it too. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's yeah. probably... One of the few places that I, I, I see that do something like that. And I still love going yeah. to it too. So if I can get ever have yeah. a chance to go to it, I'll go to it. Yeah, um, that's just it's just very very charming shit. Whenever you go, yeah, through. absolutely. Anyway, they interviewed him on that on that biography and channel, and he lied about me. He said I was very cold to him when he told me I was going to and that he was going to make it. Nothing could be further from the truth. I said, make it your own movie, man. You know, this is yours now. Don't worry about me. I was incredibly supportive. Why that piece of shit lied, I don't know. (laughs) He had no reason to. So, So so Dave, what's the next question? question? The next question. (laughs) So, uh, this question comes from a friend of mine on uh, Instagram, Film by Jake 93 Shout-outs to him. Uh, So, he asked, have you guys ever heard of the band Creature Feature... If so, what's your favorite song by them? Okay. I'll be very honest. Jake, don't take offense <laughs> to this. I've never heard of them. I listened to about 10 seconds of it, and I shut it off. Not my thing. <laughs> That's it. That's yeah. all I got for this. <laughs> yeah, Jake. I, you, I, I, I could see why he asked us if we like it, because they're kind of like yeah, a I get spooky. It. Yeah, I get it. Spooky band, but yeah, not my, uh, not my cup of tea. I will say this, though. They sound a lot like Oingo Boingo, a lot, like like in that realm. And I like Oingo Boingo. I like you know I'm a big fan like of like that early Oingo Boingo, and that's kind of what they sound like. And if you if nobody knows Oingo Boingo, I'm sure most of our listeners know who Oingo Boingo is. But like Danny Elfman, the composer, that's his band. 
from the 80s mm-hmm. um, and 90s. Um, but yeah, they kind of have a similar flavor. Oh, but yeah, dude. Sorry, man. Not not a not a big fan here either. So, sorry, Jake. Sorry. Thanks for submitting the question. We love you. Still we appreciate for that, it, so. though. Yeah, we appreciate it. Just, uh, but yeah, creature. Maybe maybe I'll I'll give it another listen. Give him a chance again and see if if I could I could get into them. But sure. I tried and not my <laughs> cup of uh, not my cup of tea either. So Dave and I are. Uh, on the same boat there, on the same page. But if if you like them, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing, nothing wrong, wrong with, with that. With anyone don't into yuck, creature feature, don't yuck somebody's <laughs> yum. <laughs> I'm sure there's bands we like that people think they fucking suck, and we like them. So it happens. So uh, who knows? Um, the next question is from at James Flow O Nine. Uh, he's always uh, commenting on stuff on Instagram. He's always saying funny things. A lot of our little references, he'll be like, so Lou, Tommy Valley, he'll put funny little comments. It's pretty hysterical. Uh-huh. <laughs> he'll do that to like our post from time to time. Um, but his question is, if you had John Carpenter on the podcast and got to ask him one question, what would it be? You go, so, you take it, you take it first. So if we had John Carpenter on the show, Honestly, a lot of my questions would pertain to Assault on Precinct 13 because I feel like I like that. all of his hor- all of his horror films are for the most part have been covered at nauseum. Like even we've talked about fucking Halloween, you know, like we're even guilty of fucking talking about it. Um, and everyone talks about The Fog, Escape from New York, you know, and, and Christine. And don't get me wrong, I fucking John Carpenter is like one of my favorite directors of all time, and all those movies are fucking a plus plus when it comes to like just film and horror films in general to me. Um, But I feel like Assault on Precinct 13, which is, you know, really early in his filmography. It's only like his second. Oh, dude, probably top three John Carpenter films for me. I don't know where I place it, but it's up there in the top three films out of of his entire filmography. But I'd love to hear more behind the scenes stories. Like I have the Blu-ray and there's some stuff on it, commentaries and things like that. But that would be mostly my, like what was it like to shoot in a real precinct? And I, and I believe that's what they shot in stuff like that. A lot of, Assault on Precinct 13 stuff. He's also so old that I'm sure he'd be like, and John Carpenter, if you've ever watched an interview with him, he looks like he doesn't even want to be there half the time. He's like definitely an old man. <laughs> He's like, oh, I don't fucking know. I, whatever. I have no idea. Like, you know, but that would be probably That's what cool. I would ask him. Stuff like the score. How long did it take him to come up with that really, to me, iconic score for that film? You know, that opening sequence and that little, you know, that whole thing. Mm-hmm. It's fucking amazing. So that would be what I would ask him. What would you uh, ask John Carpenter if we had him on the show, bud? Oh, I hope James Flo doesn't get mad at my answer for this. So I've said <laughs> it here and there. John Carpenter is a big influence on the music I compose. But as weird yeah. as this may sound, when it comes to people I admire, I don't care to even meet them i don't care to want to talk to them i I really don't like it to me it's just that there's a divide where okay i like this person's whatever they're creating art and yeah and i take (laughs) what i can from it and i will let it influence me if it does and that's it so like if he was on the show i i I wouldn't even know i liked what you brought up because i didn't even think of that i would that that is something that i would be curious to hear about yeah but i know this isn't john carpenter but <laughs> if Angelo Bada Lamente was on our show, that'd be a yeah. different story. I would like to pick mm. his brain. And the main question would be, what do you picture in your head when you compose stuff? Because like, I would love to yeah. just – because he's like one of the biggest influences on oh, me. And that's sure. someone I would love to really kind of pick their brain. He's like maybe one of two people. So – Oh, I, I'd say <laughs> – listen, I, we're both kind of guilty of that. We're not like – we don't collect autographs when we go to no, conventions. I don't we don't care take about pictures. That stuff. Yeah. We don't really take pictures of people like or with people at these shows. Neither one of us do that. When it was funny, it came up on my like I think Facebook like what is it? Like not flashback, whatever the fuck you call it, when it reminds you of something memory. Mm-hmm. Is memory. I think what they're called on Facebook. And the last time I took a picture with somebody was with our buddy Mike. And he had just he I was at a couple of drinks in me. He goes, Hey, 
I'm going to go take a picture with uh, I, I, her mind. Her name slips my mind. But she's like she was in Death Proof. She was the stunt double for Uma Thurman. In, oh, in yeah. Kill I Bill. forgot her name. She, yeah, she's yeah. really cool. Yeah. She seems and, cool. And, yeah. Zo- he was like, Zoe oh, something. Zoe, Zoe something. Zo- is it Zoe Bell? Yeah, I think so. I might so. be wrong. I think, I think whatever. It it's that. around that, yeah. Um, he was, Mike goes, yo, and we both, you know, Mike and I had a few drinks in us. He goes, yo, come with me to go meet her. I'm going to take a picture with her. I was like, all right. So I go, and we just like are smiling, like, hey, she was really sweet. So it wasn't a bad yeah, actually, experience, but. Actually, the last, the, the last person, you're, you're forgetting something. The last person, yes. famous person that we met oh, okay. was James Lorenz. From fucking oh, yes. the Jerky Boys movie, <laughs> fucking yes. Frankenhooker. Frankenhooker, uh, yes. He he was in the uh, what what's the what is it the Irishman? He was in that. He yeah, was in he a bunch of. That. We met him and, and Christy yes, P. Yes. Christy P. was with us too. Yes, yes. Chris was with us too. I forgot about. I completely forgot about that. Yeah, I have. No. It's funny because that picture is I think on my phone, and I should have fucking posted it on Haunted Hangover. I'll have to. Uh, Post that up one day because that is pretty, I love that is a good photo. Oh, he's in, he's in uh I think he's in Street Trash too. That's what it yeah, is. He, he was there because trash. of Street yeah. Trash. Yo, yeah, he was. He I love that he played Brett Weir in the fucking Jerky Boys movie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that is great. Yeah, I haven't watched Jerky uh, Boys movie in so long. I've got to fucking. Revisit it's all that uh, one. It's so I love it. Uh, but yeah, I, I guess I guess if any, if this tells you anything about like you and I, I guess yeah, we, won't we don't be, care. Like, reach, we won't be reaching out to people like, hey, John Carpenter, no. or whoever, you want to be on the no, show? We don't. I, I guess. It's not that we don't care. We just that's not how we go about this stuff. We just you know we like this person's art and that's it. Like we just keep it moving. I wanna buy a gun. Got this here, ladies' Saturday night special. A ladies' gun. It's small, man. It's easy to carry. Perfect for a woman. Well, that's real nice, dear. But I'm more interested in something that'll take the head off a honky at 20 paces. So this next question comes from vibes underscore Cleveland. And the question is, what is your favorite horror movie score? Um, I guess I'll take this one uh, first. Yeah, go for it. And mine is... John McCallum's score to Surf Nazis Must Die. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> it's I, it's my favorite score. Uh, I could explain it a bit, and and there's also like this weird underlying reason that I don't know why I like it so much. And I think I could maybe touch on it just a little bit. Is that okay. it's a huge influence on me. Uh, it's what I want to hear in my movie scores. It's synth heavy. It's menacing and it's melancholic. Uh, it's also got some like beat beat use that's sparsely used throughout and the way i heard about it and this is kind of maybe the reason why i hold it so dear to me is i have like the audio like the 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 music track from the vhs tape that's how i heard it oh wow it's just, interesting it's it's so interesting because the 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 way the score plays out it's got bits of dialogue in it mm. and it's just so cool to listen to the way i have it so that I think that's why I'm just like it's such a special listen, and you can find it on YouTube. I'll, I'll try to get the link to you yeah. to maybe get to, like that's how I heard about it, and I even have it like where it's a genre. I have it as VHS audio riff. <laughs> so it's <laughs> that that is my favorite movie score, and I know it's a lot going from Angela Bottolamente to John McCallum, but that yeah. really is truly my favorite uh my favorite movie score. How about you? It's that's a good one though. I will say, and again, I'm not a big, you know, it's associated with trauma, but that is a I will say that is a really good score. I, I love that movie. VHS too. That. that movie's I have awesome. VHS. It is good. I do. It's one of the few trauma movies I appreciate and have fun with, so um, that's fair. it's funny you, you mentioned this movie earlier and I was like thinking about it like I have a lot of favorite horror movie scores. It was really hard to narrow it down and I didn't want to be like Halloween or something like that because that's honestly as much as I love the Halloween score, it's not my favorite score. Um, and a lot of John Carpenter stuff, obviously we just talked about John Carpenter. Um, I, I do love, but I will say the It Follows score. It's amazing. Um, is fucking, is it Disaster Piece? or Disaster, disaster Piece. Disaster piece. Yep. That shit's fucking. I have that on vinyl. That shit is phenomenal. Like for a, yeah. a horror film, it's great. It's gotta be up there. And, I, and I'm sure most people agree with uh, with me and with you because you, you, I know you like it a lot too. That it's a fucking great 
score. He, he scores from, a lot of video games and yeah, stuff, and you could yeah, hear the yeah. video game influence a little bit on the on this on that one. But yeah, I agree with you. That's in that's in my top scores too. It's a f- phenomenal score. Phenomenal. Great. It's 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 honestly really eerie. It's a great soundtrack to listen to a score, I should say. Score to listen to during Halloween. Like it fits perfectly yeah. in any Halloween mixtape, playlist, whatever you want to call it. Like pick a track and there's some really good tracks that you can add like on their own. The main theme is great. Like there's a lot. But that would that would have to be off the top of my head. And I wanted to pick something a little more recent. That's up there as one of my favorite favorite scores of of all time in all the film that's definitely up there you know i don't know where i'd place it but it's up there um so the next question is from our buddy grimy there he goes again grimy our grimy. bud grimy what always up, grimy? dude we thought we love we, uh, all of we us do. here on that hangover we fucking we love do you love you the you're the best, Grimy. I hope you. I hope you know that, Grimy. <laughs> if you're listening, um, we love you. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. The Grimy's the fucking man. Again, he designed one of the uh, one of stickers. the uh, logos for us. One of the stickers. One of the vinyl stickers. So go check that out if you haven't. Again, um, and Grimy, check out his podcast too. You know they they do something similar to us, a little more on the nostalgic side of things, not just Halloween, but. It's a great show, Leftover Piece of Podcast. Derek, too, always shows us love. We have to have Derek on the show again soon. It's been a while. Got to get him on uh, again soon just to talk shit. Uh, But Grimey's question, at Retroplasm, and this was a good one. I I like this one, and and, and I have two answers. Um, But obviously, I think you're going to go first this time. It's your turn to go first. What's your favorite episode like that we've done so far? Uh, I would say... The Halloween playlists. Those are probably yeah, my favorite. I knew you were gonna say Is that, that what you one. thought I was going to say? Yeah. I, I said yeah. the same thing. I really enjoy our Halloween mixtape episodes. We've only done two of them. Um, but I, I just like us. I, I already started putting together songs for this year's. Yeah, me too. I already yeah. have. I think I have like two or three saying. songs music, that I'm going to go for. Music. I don't yeah. mean to cut you off, but I just want to say this. Music is a big no, part of our totally. lives. So it's, yeah. you know, it's... When you're talking about something that you love, and obviously we're talking about Halloween, but still, like yeah, it's, it's music. <laughs> th- 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 those are fun to those are fun to put together. But go ahead, I'm sorry, I cut you off. No, no, no worries. And, and even still, and what's cool about this past year is we had we we did the normal mixtape, and then over on Patreon, we I think we did four more tracks or something like that, in like a mini episode yeah. to expand the mixtape because it's a lot. Again, like you said, it's a lot of fun to kind of just. Talk about why we pick these songs yeah. and why they remind us of Halloween. Our little scenarios that we create that, like, where would where would we be, where would we we be listening to these, yep. you know, these tapes and shit like that? Just a lot of fun. Um, uh, but I will say one more thing, one more episode that I that I really enjoyed, and it's a more recent one. And funny that he's asking us this, but the show we had on with Grimy talking about how was a good one. Yeah. That was a probably, you know, if I had to rate episodes, it would be in the top five of one of ours. Um, just a lot of fun. Three buds talking shit about Halloween junk food. You know, some some more recent, some some discontinued. You know, so that's that was another really, really great, great you know that's another great episode, and I and I have, we're definitely gonna you know keep that keep that going with Grimy because Grimy is honestly the guy who we do that with. So he's been the two times we've done that, he's the guest on the show. So Grimy, you answered your own question basically. You're on them as well. You're on yeah, some of boy. our favorite episodes. So <laughs> there you go. All right, bud. What's the next question? <laughs> the next question is do you know the muffin man from at cherry dash darlin uh i who is cherry darlin this is, you, this is you my can, friend chantel i had a feeling that was chantel okay because yeah. you control the haunted hangover uh instagram yeah, so yeah, I, a yeah, lot yeah, of the people right. that comment yeah. i'm not you know yeah, i'm not uh i don't she see was, it uh, so <laughs> yeah she was, was just her, messing though. around I do have a, I do have, what, what is it? Uh, do you know the Muffin Man? The Muffin well, Man. I almost think of Shrek. <laughs> well, well, listen, 
L- listen, Chantel, I can say this. Th- there used to be a brunch spot right by my house that I used to go to, and Louie's been there too, and they used to serve these little mini muffins, and I oh, would yeah, ask yeah. for baskets and baskets of them. They were so fucking good, so there you go. Damn, you really do know the muffin man then. Uh, so maybe. That was, a, that was a valid question. You really do know the muffin man. Yeah, I remember those. Those were those were some good muffins. Yeah, so I, think I, fine. I think I had like a chocolate chip one or something like that. That yeah, was uh, delicious. That that is a uh, a good that is a good muffin. I'll have to uh Yep. Uh, try. The place is, is it's it no, it's a different Damn. it's a different operation now. I haven't been there in R. two years. RIP to the original owners and the original location. That sucks. There's Damn. something there now. There's a restaurant there now, but I don't. I haven't been there in two years. So next. <laughs> so next question is from at Dan Zach one thirty eight. It's our buddy our Zach. Blood. <laughs> yeah, he, Zach uh, Butcher. Yeah, he hasn't been on the show yet, but we're gonna get him down the line. We were on his podcast a while back. I forget when. I think last year. Um, yeah, it was a uh, Butcher Bordello podcast. Uh, yeah. Butcher Bordello Blood. Um, uh, that we had, he was just, it was just basically a general, uh, general like Q and a of just stuff yeah. like what we do and whatnot. I love Zach. I talk to Zach all the time. Yeah, it was a good episode. Definitely go check that out. Um, his question is any episodes you'd redo. And I have one right here. <laughs> I never go back. Th- this is my philosophy. I don't either. Yeah, if I do something and I'm not 100% and nothing, you know, as a, a guy that, you know, I take my projects very seriously as an editor, producer, director, you know, all the hats I wear, I'm host, whatever the fuck, you know, I am <laughs> to, to this and to other stuff I do. Um, I take it very seriously and I try not to overthink it because sometimes I feel you know, when you work on a project, you can work on it forever. Like an edit, I feel like I can work on it forever. And the one thing Haunted Hangover has, you know, taught me is to kind of let things go sometimes. To not dwell on trying to make things super perfect. Make it as perfect right. as you can. Right. You know what That's I mean? It. You get what yeah, I'm saying, Of course, Dave? Of course and I do. you got to like just kind of, you know, you got to you gotta just realize you did the best you could sometimes. Especially when you, you know... 70 it's been 70 episodes of a haunted hangover thing that's currently in our podcast feed not including patreon so it's a lot i've done you know as an editor and stuff and i think as our recordings it's fine you know but just putting the show together um you know just letting it go realizing okay it's done yeah maybe you heard a car honk in the background in my neighborhood or Maybe some weird noise in Dave's house, you know, saying in the background, <laughs> you just got to let it go what sometimes, are you, talking you know about? what I mean? <laughs> you just got to let the shit go and make the best of it what you will. But there is an episode I- I'd like to maybe revisit in the future and, and-, and kind of reevaluate, I'd say. And that's when we covered Over the Garden Wall. Now... The reason why I, I think that episode um, can be redone over the garden wall is because we crammed an huh. entire season. That's my choice of too. A show. Oh, it is. Yeah, we crammed an entire yeah. season of a show, basically an entire mini series, into one of our episodes, and that might have been a little overzealous of us. Like I think we we jumped the gun a little bit there, trying trying to cover so much. In such a, yeah. you know, in an hour, you know, it's, so it's, it's funny you, it's really funny you brought that up because that is exactly what I put. And I, just to add on to what you said, I, when we covered it, I had, I hadn't seen it. Like I had to like just watch bits and pieces. Yeah. But I would, I wish I watched it recently with the lens that I have now, the way I watch yeah. things. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because so, so the time might... I watched it, I watched it in 2014 or yeah, 2015, yeah, yeah. you know, it's just fucking eight years later that, yeah. you know, I don't even view things the same way anymore. So I would have liked to have yeah. done that. But I agree with you. It did, we did cram a lot into, you know, a short amount of time. And it's such a dense show. You know, maybe we should have done something more in the format of like our fate. We did. We always do our favorite things and that, you know, when it comes to covering a episode of a show, <laughs> never an entire season or miniseries. 
Uh, but maybe in the future we'll we'll revisit it and kind of you know reflect on it a little more. Maybe dive a little deeper into yeah, it. Yeah, I would love to. Um, maybe some specific episodes that would definitely make for a great Patreon episode. Just kind of you know really going into detail some of the things we like and not going into what happens because we already did that because there's so much. I think yeah. we did a. I think I think we did a decent job, but I think we could have oh, definitely. definitely Handled it a little, handled mm-hmm. it with a little more can, care, a little more finesse, a little, you know, a little just pizzazz. a little more of what you know. Yeah, go go into a greater detail on how it made us feel and stuff like that. Um, yeah, but I I, I, just, I I do love how we both picked over the garden yep. wall. <laughs> that is that is really uh that, that is, is really definitely fucking funny. funny. Yeah, that is funny. Uh, what's the next question, Dave? The ne- the next question is from Nails Never Fails. And this is, the question is, what is your favorite psycho chick flick and why? So uh, for me, so I had to think about this one and I didn't want to choose something generic or something that everybody knew. Yeah. So this is a deep cut. <laughs> um, <laughs> I could speak of a really silly one I watched over the summer with Sheila. It's called Hell's Highway. It's a shot on video ah. uh, directed by <laughs> Jeff Leroy. It's okay. very violent and entertaining. Our main villain, Lucinda, is a lot of fun to watch. And if I could sum up this movie in a few words, it would be this. Road trip, gore, shot on video, absurd shock ending. (laughs) Please check it out. I think it's on YouTube or there's like a condensed version. Also, Possession. (laughs) I totally thought of that that at the end. I was like, oh, wait, I should just add that in there. But we'll, we'll, we'll keep it to Hell's Highway, which is a shit ton of fun to watch. Dude, how about you? I think I've I think I've seen Hell Highway. Possession is fucking amazing. So, oh yeah, I love I love Possession. I actually want to do an episode on Possession. Maybe like me, you, and Chris or something. I like watched that. Like it recently, and that yeah, that movie is so fucking is a good. lot to there's a lot to tackle yeah. in that movie. Yeah, it's so there's so, like eight different so versions good. of the movie. Yeah, it's fucking really really well made and and eerie as fuck. It's such an odd movie, but in the best way possible. Mm-hmm. Um, before I go into my pick, uh, at nails never fails is my buddy, Tiffany. I think you've met Tiffany before. Um, she's the one that submitted this question. Yes. So, <laughs> yeah, okay. yes. so she's the one, she's always at monster mania, always at horror conventions. What's up, Tiffany. If you're listening, watch um, she submitted hell's this. highway, Tiffany. <laughs> yeah. Watch hell's highway. And I'm sure I'm, she probably has. She's a huge horror fan. So she's probably seen Hell's Highway and Possession. And probably my pick, which I'm about to get into. Uh, so my favorite psycho chick flick. Um, the one that came to mind is this Jack Hill movie. I'm a big Jack Hill fan. He's a you know director in the 70s. Uh, Switchblade Sisters. And oh. to sum up, sum up the movie, it's one. about two female gangs. Or a female gang, I should say, that splits up kind of into two i think at one point and there's a lot of drama within the gang and there's betrayal and there's a lot to it's an exploitation movie through and through and there's a lot of really memorable characters in that movie that are all women it's you know female driven as far as leads go and like the dudes in that movie all suck and they're like afterthoughts half the time which is which is great for that for the type of film that it is and for it to be a film from the 70s um, but yeah, Jack Hill's uh, another director I love. Like I love Foxy Brown, Coffee, Big Bird Cage, Switchblade Sisters. I love all of his stuff from the seventies. So that would be my uh, psycho chick flick because uh, there's a lot of That's psycho a good chicks. One. That's a lot. I saw a lot it over the summer. I liked it a lot. Sisters, so good. Such a underrated movie. I feel like not a lot of people uh, yeah. talk about Switchblade Sisters. So that's my uh, that's my pick for a psycho chick flick. Two teenage wildcats, both hung up on the same guy. One of them had to go the hard way. Meet the teenage girl gang even the cops were scared of. Switchblade Sisters is a story of today and maybe a little bit of tomorrow. You got to handle this question because I have never been... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Let's jump into a Twitter now because these next two questions are from Twitter. Um, and yes, this next question, speaking of Derek, this next question is from Dem Boys Official. Thanks, thanks, Derek. Our boy Derek, which we, we just mentioned him a few uh, a minute or two ago. We just talked about Derek. 
He's also been on the podcast. He's been a guest on the show. Um, yeah, you won't be able to answer this, Dave, because again, like you said, you've never been. Um, I've been several times. Um, but his question is, favorite year of or haunted house from Halloween Horror Nights? Which, if you don't know what that is, that's the Universal Studios Halloween event on the West Coast, California, and East Coast, uh, Florida. They, they they have one at their Universal Studios Park in Orlando, I should say. Um and it's a, an event with tons of haunted houses and shows and shit like that. We've talked about it on the show before. Um, and more than likely, you know what it is. Um, I will say this. I, I've been probably five times, four times, which is fucking crazy that I've been that many times. And, and I've been to both. I've been to the one in Orlando and the one in California. So I've been to both. I've been to the events on both coasts, basically. Well, um, fancy. I know, very fancy. It's not a cheap, not a cheap ticket either. I will, I'm, I will say I'm that. Sure. <laughs> um, but I will say twenty six, Halloween Horror Nights twenty six, was a lot of fun. Um, I remember that one being the year that because they usually have original, at the, specifically the one in Orlando has original haunts, and they have ones um, based on IPs, intellectual property based on movies and shows and shit like that, video games. Uh, but yeah, 26 was a lot of fun. That one featured a a haunted house called Halloween Hell Comes to Haddonfield, which was basically a haunted house set in the world of Halloween 2, the sequel That's to the cool. original Halloween. So like it starts at the end of the first Halloween and you end up in the hospital and you see scenes from Halloween 2, him drowning the woman in the jacuzzi, him stabbing the uh, the nurse and lifting her up. Him fucking on fire, dude. They literally made the entire hospital one wing area look like it's on fire. And Michael Myers is all burnt. That was a fucking awesome, awesome haunted house. And I remember the exterior of it looked like um, it looked like the hospital a little bit, if I remember correctly. Right. Like it had a giant pumpkin with the skull and all that on it. Uh, there was also an exorcist house that year. There was a Texas Chainsaw Massacre house that year and a Krampus house, which, dude, Halloween Horror Nights, and I've talked about it on the show before, the attention to detail making you feel like you're in these movies is crazy. Just the smells they use, like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre house smelled like rotten, raw, nasty meat. The exorcist house smelled like vomit. Fucking wow. wild. Dude, there was I always a- wanted to go. <laughs> Dude, there's literally a, there was a scene at the, in the uh, in the Exorcist house that year. I remember it like it was yesterday, where there's like a hallway, and the walls look like and I might have mentioned this on the show, but the walls look like the bed sheets from Reagan's bed, and there's vomit, and like she's jumping out at you with like spray, and it's like vomit noises. It's fucking hysterical. And the Krampus house had a. Uh, it smelled like pine and there was Christmas and you saw the big Krampus monster and the little gingerbread men. Fucking dope. Bonus. Awesome. I got a bonus uh, haunt that I thought was really dope and odd because it was years after the movie had come out. But I went to Halloween Horror Nights 25, I believe it was the year before, and they had an alien versus predator house, which was dope. It was fucking crazy. I remember there was a part where the ceiling is lowered and you're in this really narrow hallway and you have to crouch down and crawl through it and there's fucking aliens popping out on the sides like the big you know xenomorphs jumping out it's and awesome it was pretty fucking sick i felt like, like I was is in, it people in, in costumes it's like a combination of of people in costumes and animatronics they use both that's awesome it's sick dude there was a year where they that's had a insane. thing haunted house and i believe i mentioned this in the show too where they had it snowing inside it was fucking wild dude just what sounds what, it you know what they do with these haunts is is insane the trick-or-treat ha- haunted house i went a few years ago i'll probably go again soon i'm sure maybe you and i have to plan a trip with our uh, ladies and go maybe love in that. the future that'd oh, be a fun me, uh, i know sheila would love that <laughs> that'd be a fun thing to uh to do um he has a bonus question too he says favorite icon um so the icon is kind of the main character, like the mascot of the event for that year. Each year has one. I believe there's like a clown guy named Jack. There's a, a girl named Chance, if I remember correctly. Um, every year ha- has one and predominantly it's usually in, in the one in Florida 
has a uh, 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 icon and he's asking what the favorite one is. And I would probably go with Lady Luck. Um, 2011 was the first year I went to Halloween Horror Nights. It's crazy to think I've been going for a decade, which is wild. Um, and that was HHN 21. And basically what she was, was a, a like gambling, like, I guess like gamble or casino themed shape shift shifting succubus. So it was kind of cool. She was like at the front of the park on all the advertisements. It's pretty cool. Pretty, pretty cool, cool. Uh, concept. And she was, you know, basically on every, everything. And she was in the park and they use, and they, and they do that from time to time. Some years they have an icon, some years they don't. So it really just depends on the year of Halloween Horror Nights. But yes, Dave, okay. you have to go to um, Halloween Horror Nights one year, dude, because I, I think you'll you'll fucking oh, I'm, love it. So. Uh, like I said, if, if, if Sheila and I would love to go, so we'll probably go. yeah. You guys will you guys will have a fucking blast. Um, the next question from Twitter: Do you have it on your list or no? Yeah, I'll I'll I'll, okay. I'll, 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 I'll read say it off. It. So this is from Epic Film Guys. And the question is, what were your two individual favorite Halloween decorations when you were kids? Would you like me to take this one first? Take it away. Okay. So, for me, I have the shitty makeshift monsters people would make out of pillows and crappy clothes and just toss on a chair. <laughs> like, yeah. with like a shitty mask. That was, that's one of my favorites. Yeah. It always, yeah. it it's, gives me the same feeling I had when I was a kid seeing them. Uh, I love that. And the other one was those little motion-activated ghosts that had, like, the little piece of cloth over it. And they, they vibrated and shook and made that – that either it was either mm-hmm. a song or a noise that it would make. Yeah. Those. It's like an iconic and, Halloween. Absolutely. An iconic Halloween noise from, like, the 90s and 80s. I don't think toys – like, toys and Halloween decorations, I don't think they make that noise anymore, which sucks. No. <laughs> so so that, 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 that's what I have for my decorations. How about you? So it's funny you say that noise because, and I, I think I've mentioned this on the show before, but it's always my go-to, you know, one of my go-to favorite Halloween decorations from when I was a kid. Um, is I had, and I still have it. Doesn't work anymore, unfortunately. But it's a vampire, a battery-operated vampire in a coffin. That when you turn it on, and there was a sensor, when you walk past him, he raises out of the coffin and like closes the lid, raises and closes the lid, and that song plays that one that you mentioned it was on sure so throw, many things yeah yeah i'm sure i'm sure i'll toss a sample in this episode of it um but that it that noise would would you know start playing and his eyes would would turn red and i still have them my grandmother bought them and i'll fucking never get rid of it i i think it's it doesn't even work anymore and i just love the way it looks very early 90s it fucking rules um and it's funny you mentioned the scarecrow pillowcase people <laughs> because my second favorite Halloween decoration from when I was a kid was my grandmother's. Again, my, a lot of this has to do with my grandmother, I notice. Uh, my I grandma's, that. and I think, I think I've mentioned this on the podcast as well, my grandmother's Frankenstein scarecrow on the couch, which I have a picture yep. of. I might have shared on Instagram if I haven't. I, I, I should soon. I have to double check. Um but basically what it was, was a, you know, she used like an old suit from like an uncle or something, stuffed it with pillows, like you said. And remember, I'm from the from city. From an uncle. So yeah, so like my grandma, we didn't have a porch, so like my grandma lived in an apartment building, and she was having a Halloween party that year, and I've talked about the Halloween party on the podcast, I think like two years ago or something like that. We've, I've de- It's definitely come up several times, I'm sure. Um, but she was decorating the apartment, and she put this pillow, these, these pillows and newspaper and shit inside of this suit she bought like this frankenstein mask that had hologram eyes that would Amazing. move when you walked past it it glowed in, <laughs> Amazing. It, it glowed in the dark it was glowing in the dark too put that on his head gave him a budweiser can that she pinned to a set of gloves and there's a picture of me as a vampire right next to this thing and i always it vividly just takes me back to being a kid and like you know and i think that's yeah, like of 91, course 90 91 and going to that Halloween party. And that was like, my grandma was so proud of that decoration, dude. Like, that was the hit of the party. The fucking dude. It looked like a real dude, too. When I was a kid, I was scared of him, I think, if I remember correctly. Too. At first, I was like, yo, what the fuck is that? You know what I mean? And, yep. uh, and yeah, that was that's probably, amazing. That's probably my second favorite 
I, uh, Halloween decoration. I, I love, I love, love that we both can. chose the same things, basically. Yeah, a, a scarecrow. Like a, it's basically a scarecrow. Yeah. That's what it is when you think about it. But I do like how she put the beer can. Yeah, the beer can pinned. Gotta have to, the beer uh, can. Yo, my grandma, I don't know how, but my grandma loved Budweiser. Like, I know, you, obviously, you don't fucking drink, but, like, I drink beer, and Budweiser is not my is not my go-to beer. And I don't know how you my grandma say. my grandma enjoyed a, a good Bud. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, she enjoyed it. She enjoyed a, a Budweiser for whatever reason. So, she drank that can of beer and then pinned it to his fucking hand. Um, amazing. So yeah, those those are my two picks. Uh, we have two bonus questions, and I'm, I'm making these bonus questions before we wrap up here because they're from one's from your girlfriend, and the other one's from Chris. my beautiful love. <laughs> so and the other one's from Chris, who is a part of Haunted Hangover. So Haunted it's kind of cheating. Very it's kind of cheating. You know, you know what I'm saying. So it's kind of like. So I say, you know what? They'll be the bonus questions as we we close off. Uh, we close. We close the episode here. Um, you know what? Since this is your lady's question that she she submitted, why don't you read it, Dave? Okay. All right. Do you mind if I answer this one first? Yes. Go for it. Okay. So my beautiful love, Sheila Marie <laughs> at Sheila Marie. I believe it's two underscores underscore underscore okay. Marie. Um, asked favorite women in horror queer people in horror and black or brown people in horror this is a great question and i had this was probably the most i had to think about uh during all these questions uh thinking about all these questions so here's my list it's gonna take maybe a minute to go through i'm i have little short little sentences about it and then i'll throw it over to you so Micah Monroe as Jay from It Follows. Very likable and very believable as just a teen. I, 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 she's supposed to be a teen or a, someone in their early 20s. Either way, very like early 20s, like, yeah. uh, believable as a young adult, I should say. Um, Kate Hodge as Michelle from Leatherface, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. Again, very likable and goes from hunted to hunter in that movie, and I love that. Uh, Caroline Williams as Stretch from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. She is so fucking fun to watch in that movie. And yeah. honestly, I always say she's the original Jennifer Aniston because she looks like Jennifer Aniston, yeah. but she predates Jennifer Aniston so yeah. much. Yeah. And she's still doing shit, shorts. which I love. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I love the, she, and, the little and, denim shorts. <laughs> Amelia Kincaid as Angela from Night of the Demons. So of charismatic, course. animated. Big babe, respectfully. Also a huge, <laughs> huge animal rights advocate, which I love. Yeah. This is one I had to throw in because as I was thinking of uh as I was thinking of black or brown people in horror, it made me it reminded me of, and that's Patricia Tallman as Barbara from Night of the Living Dead 1990. She's mm. a fucking first off. She she's a, a a a stunt woman, which I love. She does lots of stunt. Oh, I didn't uh, know that. She did a lot of yeah. She was a stunt woman, and she was on Star Trek. She did a big Star Trek uh, stint for a while. But I love how she goes from – I love the transformation from timid to large and in charge. Insanely underrated, that uh, that actress. I don't Very know if she's different still doing from stuff. the original. Barbara exactly. is completely different exactly. in, the, uh, in the original, And which she's cool. badass. She, yeah, she, she is, becomes 100%. real badass in that movie. Uh, yeah. Now, as far as, uh, as far as queer people in horror – uh, so this is one that I don't know if it's necessarily someone that's queer, but this is something Sheila put me onto, and that is Crispin Glover's character as Lane from River's Edge. Uh, he's very bizarre and entertaining, oh, wow. and I, I wouldn't say River's Edge is a horror movie, but it does get lumped in there sometimes. Uh, yeah. Sheila brought the idea of there's a queer coding in that movie of Crispin Glover's character because he's trying so hard. Is it John? Is it uh, is that the name of the guy? Uh, the main the guy that kills his girlfriend. Yeah, I, think I think it's, it's John. John yeah. You could see how upset he is when he find like he's trying so hard to cover yeah. up for him. And I, that was a really good like I was like I never thought of it like that. It makes me look at the movie in a completely different way yeah. too. So, and now this is one. That I absolutely love. And that is, and I hope I'm pronouncing her name correctly, Cecile de France as Marie from High Tension. Such a strong mm. character and performance. Yeah. If you've never seen High Tension, 
Her, she's fucking great in that movie. And yeah. I'm not going to say any more about her character because you need to watch that movie, especially if you've never seen it. Fucking amazing. I can't give anything away. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I wanted to... So now this is going toward... Now this is going to uh, black and brown people in horror. And I wanted to add uh, Asian too. So yes. we have Tony Todd as Ben from Night of the Living Dead 1990. Strong lead. And in my opinion, better than Candyman, but... He comes off as an alpha male, but slowly deteriorates and shows he's not as strong as he thinks. I really like that about his character. Jill Tereshita as Arab from Sleepaway Camp 3, Teenage Wasteland. <laughs> yeah. As far as I know, she's never mentioned amongst uh, Scream Queens. Yeah. Like, you never hear about her. Mm-hmm. And again, respectfully, Big Babe. She's a Knight of the Demons. She's just such a cool, she's just such a cool character. I wish she got more shine, if yeah. you will. Um, that was someone I wanted to throw into the mix. We got Danny Trejo as Razor Charlie from Dust Till Dawn. Uh, from Dust Yo, Till Danny Dawn. Danny Trejo's the man in general. <laughs> <laughs> <There you go. laughs> I mean, he's an iconic actor you'll never forget. And then th- this is someone else I wanted to throw in there, and that's Fred Williamson, an ex football player who starred yeah. in a lot of black exploitation and exploitation films. And uh, I felt he was worth mentioning. He's someone that also you don't really. I mean, I'm sure back in his day, you know, he was in a lot yeah. of things. But today, you don't hear those names thrown out. And uh, yeah, those are that's my list. I hope I didn't, you know, I, I took up that a little great. bit of time. But that was great. Yeah. I'm so happy you went with actors and characters and stuff because I went the other route of filmmakers and some okay. and some actors. I like that. I did. A, I that. mixed it up a little bit here, but it's primarily directors. Just I guess because I'm a director, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna pick. Some directors. Love that. Uh, and I only picked like one or two for, you know, each um, section here. Um, but I have two for women in horror. So women, first one, Catherine Bigelow because she directed Near Dark. And I actually yep. rewatched Near Dark recently. And it's I love that fucking movie. And I watched Point Break, not horror, but that's another fucking great movie directed by her. So I, I mm-hmm. went with I went with, with Catherine Bigelow. Um Another woman in horror, uh, and this is – she made two films I really liked. Re- these are more recent films, um, and I believe she's she's Asian. Uh, her last name is Car- – her, her first name's Karen. Her last name's Kusama. It's a K-U-S-A-M-A. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Karen Kusama. She directed Jennifer's Body, which I I think is a fun movie. It's silly. I had to rewatch that. Yeah, I saw it in the theater. I, I think – it's a really, really just fun, silly movie. Like, I had a good time. I remember seeing it in theater, having a good time with it, and then watching it um, at home and buying the Blu-ray. And still, even when it's on TV, I'll, like, leave it on. Like, it's a, a fun horror comedy. And I feel like it's grown yeah. with a – it's gotten, like, a little bit of a cult following um, the last few years. And then the other movie she directed was uh, The Invitation, which – is a fucking great. Have you seen that with Haven't the cult? I haven't seen it. No. You know what I'm talking about though, right? It. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, it's like about a about a couple that goes to yeah. a party, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, great great just directors in horror, I guess, or or directors that direct I love that. horror films. Obviously like Mary Lambert's another big one, Pet Cemetery 1 and 2, American Psycho. She's, you know, directed. There's, you know, it, it's kind of crazy to think that, you know, you, you look back in the 80s and the 90s and 70s there weren't a lot of female directors and like more recently there've been a lot coming out, which is cool. I love like, it. you know, The Love Witch, that I forget her name. She, you know, she there were a, a, a female director. Um uh, all the Slumber Party Massacre movies were all female directors, which yep. is fucking great. People forget that sometimes, I think, when it comes to the Sleepaway Camp. Not Sleepaway Camp, Slumber Party Massacre, I mean, uh, series. They were all directed uh, by women. And I know you you, you know, you know, love those first two you know, films oh just goodness. as much as I do. They're yep. fucking a lot of fun. Um, so for Queer, I went with – and this is like – an old director. And there's a reason why I picked this. Cause I think the shit is cool. So the, my pick for queer is James whale. He directed the original Frankenstein bride of Frankenstein, the, the invisible man and the old dark house, which are all movies from like the twenties and thirties, black okay. and white, you know, universal movies. But what I like about it was dude, imagine being like a gay man, gay filmmaker, gay director during those times. And I was reading a little bit about him and, and, you know, and I love 
all those old like Universal monster movies. And I really like the old Dark House does not get the love it should when it comes to horror films. And Dave, if you've never seen the old Dark House, fucking watch that movie. But I will. It's really good. It's fucking so atmospheric. Like, and it's black and white. I'm adding it. Super, I'm adding it now. It's super, my, super atmospheric. It's black my and box. white horror film. Boris Karloff's in it. But yeah, James Whale never hid the fact that he was gay. He lived with his boyfriend. Never kept kept it a secret. But what's so amazing about it is that he didn't give a shit. And this was during you know, obviously we were not around. But I ca- I can't imagine how kind of shitty the world was during those days you know towards you know people that were gay you know i i just can't imagine how it must have been in the 30s and 20s you know having to keep that a secret or whatever so it's it's cool that he was openly gay and now if you you know google him or you read about him you'll see that you know some of the most classic horror films from that era come on dude like frankenstein bride of frankenstein invisible man those three films are like iconic you know Universal monster movies. So that's that's that was my pick for uh, queer. I again went with a director. Uh, Black and brown. Uh, <laughs> the, the, my first pick, and, and, I'm, and this is an this is an act, actor actress. Uh, I went with Pam Greer because I'm a fucking huge. Yeah. I'm a huge Pam Greer fan, and 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 I'm I'm a little bit of a I'm a little bit of a liar because I said you know we're not into meeting people. But Pam Greer did a chiller theater. No, she's someone you'd want to meet. Like 12 <laughs> sure. years ago, 12 or 13 years ago, a chiller theater. And I paid to fucking meet her. And my mom, my mom was there. I forget why my mom was at chiller theater, but she was there <laughs> with me. And I met Elvira at that same event. Um, Pam Greer, like, dude, I was the last person in line. She stood talking to me and my mom for like 30 minutes about just movies. It's awesome. And fucking, you know, everything. I didn't get a picture, but I got her autograph or whatever. But she was just talking about, you know, filmmaking. I was asking her about, like, being in, like, Foxy Brown and coffee. And she was answering questions. And my mom mentioned uh, Fort Apache the Bronx because she plays, like, a prostitute in that mm-hmm. movie. And it's pretty iconic. She ends up in a rug rolled up in the street. It's fucking crazy. But, yeah, Pam Greer. I'm a huge Pam Greer fan. So, like, she was going to be, you know, I had to mention her in my in my picks here. Love uh, that. She's fucking Pam. She's a class of 1999. Fucking great in that yep. movie. <laughs> she sure <laughs> Jackie is. Jackie Brown, obviously. Big. She was in all of Jack. A lot of Jack Hill movies. No, she's Big in. Cage, Big she's Dollhouse. in fucking uh, Ghost of Mars. She's in John Ghost Carpenter's of Ghost of Mars. Dude, she's been in so many fucking great, great movies. Pam Greer is a. She's a national treasure in my in my yep. fucking world. She's uh, She can do no. I'll watch anything she's fucking in. I remember even watching The L Word. When it was on, watching episodes of that because she was in it, like she was on the show, so it mm-hmm. was cool that she was like popping up in something such you know so much later in her career. Um, and even still, if I see her in something, I'll fucking watch it. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just on. I'm like, oh shit, that's Pam Greer, and I'll fucking watch it. Uh, my other two picks, um, I went with, and I'm probably gonna butch- butcher this. He's from Brazil. His name is Jose mahika marins and this is the dude that directed all the coffin joe movies i'm a big coffin joe okay. fan so he's got like a series of films uh, uh, you're familiar with coffin joe right dave yeah i've never seen any of them but i know they're what they, all i would know what they are 60s i believe 50s and 60s into 70s um embodiment of evil is one of his last films he directed as the character um he's from brazil again always been a big fan of his films had to throw him in here um, and then the last pick is a more contemporary one, Jordan Peele, because I think the dude's just, he's the, yeah. he's making like a like horror pick. movies. He's like, you know, like us. Yeah. Get true. out. His new movie. Nope. Looks fucking intriguing as hell. It looks very like, good. I can't wait to see it. You know, he produced the new Candyman and wrote, I think he co-wrote it as well. So that's definitely a, a, a guy who I think is, you know, just a fucking phenomenal director and person of color and he's just dude all of his movies i'm always super stoked to see like he's a fucking just great storyteller i feel and i know some people like weren't crazy about us and this day it wasn't as good as get out but i fucking have loved everything he's i enjoy both like, i like get yeah. out more but i but get us was still decent yeah yeah and and even his twilight zone which he produced i think and wrote some episodes and stuff i that was even a yeah. fun 
reimagining of the Twilight Zone. And like I said, I dude, I can't wait for Nope. Like I'm really looking forward to uh, yeah, to great. seeing that. It looks like it's gonna be a fucking great movie from just from what I've seen. So yeah, those are uh, those are uh, my picks. Thanks so, for that question, Sheila. Yes, Sheila. Thank you for submitting that one. That was a very very good one there. A lot of another one, multiple answers. I like that. Mm-hmm. Multiple multiple answers, multiple questions. Yeah. But the last question, again, in this bonus bonus question section here is uh, oh. <laughs> from Christopher zero one one four eight eight or Chrissy P. Chrissy P. Chris, who's a part of the Haunted Hangover squad. You know, he's you know as the show's been expanding. And we've been doing more with the brand. He's co-hosting the show with me. He's been on shows with Dave and I. He's been reviewing movies with me, Norm films with me. So he's that's it. He's in the thick of it now. You're going to be seeing a lot of him going into this third year of Haunted Hangover as a whole. But his question was, a, was both a, a, a good and funny one, I, I'd say. Um, he asked, what's your favorite thing about each other as co-hosts? Besides you both being handsome SOBs. <laughs> Yo, Chris, you're a fucking funny guy, man. What up, boy? Uh, I'll, I'll answer this one first and then, you know, okay. we'll, we'll wrap it up with your answer. But uh, I'll say this. I, I think the, the, the and, and I always say this, my, my whole, the whole point of Haunted Hangover as a show and even as a YouTube you know, channel or whatever the hell it was when it first started and then became what it is now. I always just wanted to do this with like my friends and obviously my sister because she's a big part of the big part of the brand as well. Um, and just like with people that I have a good time, like, like it's like we're just hanging out. And that's what I always appreciate about you as a co-host is just like when we do this shit, we're just talking shit, hanging out. You know, I know I'm not like the uh, the the. Uh, the easiest person when it comes to scheduling and doing stuff with, you know, because I'm always on top of everything. But that's probably, you know, just the patience and just how our conversations can go so smoothly. It's like we're just talking shit. There's no there's no fakeness to what we're saying and and talking about, you know, during, you know, our episodes. Also, our love for like nostalgia and the the experiences we've had as kids, it's similar. Especially during the Halloween season. Yeah. We have a lot We're of similarities. We're similar in age. And, so it's yeah, just only a couple years old on you. So. Yeah, a lot of the stuff that you you know experienced, I experienced as well. What's your answer, bud? <laughs> uh, so I, I, went, I, I did a little more of a professional answer here, Big Lou. Okay. And the All answer right. that I have is I really like your organization towards everything and your, your work ethic. As a producer, host, you do a lot. And uh, I know you do a lot. And there will be people that will be like, oh, you guys are the best. You know, you, you know, like I was telling I was telling Zach, our bud Zach. And by the way, I totally forgot to mention this. Uh, one of our friends, Zach Butcher, asked a question. He has an awesome band called Grip Hook. You should check them out. Um, yes. <laughs> he, you know, I had said, I was like, yo, I'm like, Louie does it like louis is like the rock louis does everything louis is the is the main man i try to help him as much as i can i just i record with louis i was like louis does a lot and i uh it's your really it's just your uh your work ethic i think it's uh commendable so that is my uh favorite thing about you as a (laughs) co-host that's why i said driving everybody crazy with my <laughs> just with the way I am sometimes, but I do it again. It's it's you know you gotta it's keep a lot the, of love. the yeah it's all love and you gotta keep the ship you gotta keep the boat afloat. You know what I mean? Like you gotta keep it moving. You know what I mean? Like keep things kind of going because without that you'll crash into an iceberg or some shit. You know what I mean? And and we've been you know doing this for two years now, and even Chris. Who is, you know, he came on as a guest a couple times. You know, he, you know, like filling in for you last week. He just jumped on in and 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 it was flawless. And that's kind of always been my thing. It's like I want to do this with, you know, the two of you. We throw in the sprinkle of Tommy Valley from time to time. You gotta have your fill of Tommy Valley. And then obviously we love Sam. Our bud Tom. You know, we and gotta Sam. Add Sam in there. And you know, just us doing this together, it's like hanging out. It's like it's like just having a good time, you know, 
bring in bringing this shit to, together. It's a fucking podcast. You got to be entertaining. And I, I could never do this alone. You know what I mean? Like I could, but it would not be nearly as probably entertaining, you know, without you guys involved. You specifically, because you're the first person that really kind of helped me kind of, you know, bring this to life, you know, because yeah, there you go. Posing there. <laughs> there it is. Um, but yeah, that's that's that. Those are all the questions. Thank you so much, everyone, yep. for submitting them. It means a lot to us and getting creative, because I talked a lot yeah, of shit saying questions. that. I, yeah, I didn't want people saying like, "What's your favorite Halloween candy?" or like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Halloween. Uh, what's your favorite Halloween costume? Like, you know, people got really creative with these. I'm sure we'll do it again, probably around. The Halloween yeah. season. That's always get the whole squad together and then take more questions and and just it's fun. It's fun because it, it it takes us into different places, and that's always a always a good thing and and, and always that's right a good way to talk about new things, especially on a podcast where we've talked about so much when it pertains to Halloween. <laughs> So that was our two-year anniversary Q&A show. Be sure to subscribe. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Haunted Hangover. If you're watching this on YouTube, like, comment, all that jazz, whatever YouTube people say. Also, check out our Patreon page, patreon.com backslash Haunted Hangover 31. And if you can rate and review us, that would be greatly appreciated. And remember, the best cure for a hangover is... More booze. Catch you guys later. Bye.